Ron, tell me your real name. Uh, Ronald? Yeah, I, I, I'll tell you my middle name, too. I, I don't mind it. Ronald uh, Dean Sissel. Okay. Sissel, S-I-S-S-E-L, right? Right. When were you born? When's your birthday? August 17th, 1950. Okay. Now, where do you live now? You live in Portsmouth or where? Uh, Dry Run Road. Dry Run? That's out on West Portsmouth, isn't it? Yes. Uh, okay. How long have you been there? Uh, well, over a year. I'm still not totally moved. Okay. I'm back and forth from uh, Route 125. Uh, below uh, Ohio Builder Surplus. Yeah, I know where that is. Yeah, that's toward the lodge, isn't it? Go up 125 to Shawnee Lodge. Yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. Now, um, where where were you born? Where? Uh, I was born in a hospital in most probably... Portsmouth? Yes. yes. Born in Portsmouth? In Portsmouth, Ohio. Uh-huh. Um, I best of my knowledge, best uh, recollect was Mercy Hospital. Oh, the old Mercy Hospital, okay. It possibly had an old general hospital where King's Daughters uh -huh. was. Uh-huh, right, I remember that. But I think it was. Where did you, where did you go to school? Uh, Friendship Elementary and then the West, West Portsmouth. Uh, high School? High, the old West Portsmouth High School. Uh-huh. Uh, behind where we got a West Portsmouth Fire, new West Portsmouth Fire Department now. Uh, when did you, did you graduate from high school? Yes, 1968. 1968, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I'm going to ask you, what was your, your parents' names? What was your father's name? Uh, Carl uh, V. Sissel. Okay, what was your mother's name? Nellie, uh, I think it was Louise. Louise, okay. Her uh, married name, and I don't, I don't know if you want to get into her. What was her maiden name? Uh, Shari. Shari, okay. S-H-I-R-E-Y. Uh, were they from uh, Soda County? Yes, uh, pretty much always lived there. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Where did they live, down on the Friendship area, down there? Uh, later on, um, my dad lived on uh, what they call Third Street, corner of uh, Third and Camp in Friendship. In Friendship, okay. Yeah. The highway was actually at one time, I guess they called it First Street. Okay. Because I lived down there uh, to uh -huh. First Street down to Second, I know that. What? Uh, Okay, did you have any brothers and sisters? Uh, I had uh, five brothers and two sisters. Okay, are they still living or not? Uh, well, uh, about half, uh, me, uh, two brothers and one, uh -huh. one sister. I had, uh, okay. I had five brothers and two sisters originally. Do you do you know your grandparents' names? How about your father's parents? Um, Andrew, uh, Andrew Sissel Senior. Uh, I'm not sure of his middle name. Uh, and uh, his wife was Pearl. Pearl. Okay. Pearl Sissel, and she was a cooper before she got married. Okay. Now, on your mother's side. Do you know your grandparents' names? Um, let's see. Shari, uh, they was pretty, I think her mother was still alive up to I uh, was maybe four or five. Uh, okay. I think uh, Sam, Sam Shari was her dad's name and uh, it's awful. Her mother. I'll tell you, if you think about it later, let me know, okay? It might just come to you. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Now, are, are, are you married, single? 
Divorced? I'm, I'm married. What's your wife's name? Linda E. Sissel. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you have any kids? I had two kids, a boy and a girl. Mm -hmm. Are they local? Uh, my boy, uh, he's, his name is Ronald uh, Joseph. He goes by Joe a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, he lives uh, up 125, uh, oh, another quarter mile plus past that uh, Builder, Ohio Builder surplus okay. on a road up uh, just a little bit off to the right up off the okay. 125. Where does your girl live? She lives in uh, uh, out in Wheelersburg. Um, yeah, if I'm thinking, I lived out there for a while. She, she got this house off of me. Mm -hmm. uh, well, if you think of that, you let me know. It just might come to you, okay? <laughs> That's the way it happens to me sometimes. Yeah, well, I've got no need to know that much anymore. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, um, after you graduated from high school, what did you do? Uh, well, I uh, actually, I, uh, I, I was trying to think, uh, I started working, I think, the uh, summer after I was a junior in high school at a, it's not there no more, uh, on up 125, there was a SETI's Grocery and Garage, Hartsville City. Mm -hmm. It's like one of these old time, uh, had gas pumps in a garage. I it, remember that. Mm -hmm. Old Hartsville City. I, I started working for him uh, in a garage. Uh, I think I did it after I uh, graduated as a junior, third year in high school that summer and then through the fall after school. I, uh, I, uh, I think I took shop mostly, a wood shop, and you could get a couple of study halls the way it was back then. Yeah. Uh, and I'd work, I, don't know, I think it was a half a day on Saturday and work. Uh, so you worked three, at three or four hours in the evening after school. I'd drive to school and come back okay. early. When did you uh, join the Navy? I want to just want to say, I, he, he had about half of West Portsmouth High School. Uh, school buses and uh, worked on them too a lot. Worked on the school buses? Yeah. Okay. And uh, I did that and I had graduated in 1968 and I had at that job and I had two or three jobs before I went into service. I worked at Williams uh, Shipping Department I think about a year. Mm -hmm. I was, I was uh, about uh, seven, 17 and nine months uh, mm -hmm. old when I graduated in June 68. Worked at Williams for a while after that, that garage and, uh, and I'd done a few different things and then before I went to service I got, went up Columbus, my two brothers. Philip and David was up there too at a Westinghouse Electric uh, company out on West Broad. Mm -hmm. And I got my draft papers when I was there. And uh, I still remember them. I, I should have kept them. Them would be kind of rare. I think it comes from the Army. It says, Greetings. You it's have greetings. Greetings, something like that. It was like a kind of making make fun a little bit. So you were drafted, but the, yeah. the Army wanted to draft you. Yeah. But you ended up in the Navy. Greetings, you have been selected for selective service or something. Uh -huh. I might have kept it, but over the years, somebody else maybe throw it away. Well, what, uh, what made you go into the Navy then instead of the Army? Well, this is, I went in the Navy in like June 16th. 17th, 1970, and I was, uh, I had 30 days, I think, to report for the Army, and uh, it 
still pretty bad back then. I had one, Nick Soda's brother was in the infantry over there, and he, he had it probably worse than any of us. He got a couple purple hearts for a grenade. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if he was wounded. What was his bullet. name? Uh, Danny uh, Paul. Sissel? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, listening to the news, it was all going on pretty good over there still in 1970. They didn't know what was going to happen later. Mm -hmm. So a good chance you go over and come back in a box. So I had a brother-in-law that retired from the Navy, listening to him talk about the Navy, and I, uh, one uh, next to oldest boy, he was in the Navy, and he was on an aircraft carrier, did med, med cruises out of North Fork, you know, and it uh, interested me, you know. So you got interested in the Navy then to, because you had, well, you had a brother in the Army, and you didn't want to do that, and some uh, other relatives in the Navy. And where did you go for your boot camp, for your basic in, Na in the Navy? Great Lakes, Illinois. Great Lakes, okay. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how you got up there? Did you go by bus or train, or did they fly you up? Well, uh, up out of Huntington Airport. Uh -huh. First time I ever flew uh, out at uh, dangerous like at Huntington Airport up there. Okay. On a mountainside. That's right. Or a big steep hill where a martial football player got killed. Mm -hmm. I think they're supposed to widen Lincoln the runway since. So they flew you up to Great Lakes then, right? Yeah. yeah. On, so I don't remember the kind of plane, maybe as a 707. That's, that's really an experience being on a plane, like taking off on a dragster. And uh -huh. <laughs> right. Next thing you know, it takes yeah. off and I uh, see treetops. And yeah. So far, so good. Well, uh, then uh, how long was your basic training in the Navy? Uh, Navy was about uh, three months total. About three months altogether? Boot okay. camp, yeah. Well, did you do any, uh, what, what was your specialty in the Navy? What did you do? Uh, well, them uh, uh, recruiters, I talked to one of them, you know, when I uh, enlisted in the Navy before the Army. You know, I, I was afraid maybe getting killed over an army. You know, it wasn't just being interested in the Navy. You know, it might have come home in a box. That, that's the way I figured it. And, uh, well, a recruiter said, I, I, I think I wanted to be an aircraft mechanic. I, I always kind of, sometimes, for some reason, I thought that. And it, They'll lie to you to get. They'll do anything to get you to join. That, they, that way, they keep that recruiting job. They meet, yeah. they meet your quota. That's pretty well known. They'll, they'll almost tell you anything if they don't put it in writing. They can tell you anything. And uh, he said, "I can. Well, I'd make a decision once I get to boot camp. No, it ain't so. They do what they want to do. They'll get. I took a test, and they." And depending on what they needed, they needed machinist mates, you know. A machinist mate? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, well, it is okay. I probably got to travel more on a ship. But aircraft mechanic probably would have been uh, one airport or something somewhere, maybe over in Da Nang. I don't know. So when, when you finished your boot camp, where did you go then? Uh... Yeah, I finished boot camp, and I I, uh, I put in, I, I guess maybe, well, I got machinist made school. A lot of them give school. There's a machinist made school up on the other side of Great Lakes from the boot camp, kind of across the, whatever that big highway that goes towards uh, uh, Milwaukee. It turns from Chicago up toward Kenosha and heads into Milwaukee. It's a big, seems like a six, eight lane highway. It's across that, and a machinist made school. Me and two other boys, I remember, got 
machinist mate school. And it was about five to six months. Did you like that? Did you like machinist mate school? Yeah, I pretty well liked it. And I, well, I didn't apply myself in high school that much. And I think high, grade school and high school compared to military schools, it, it's, I, I, I think they could do what they do in grade school and high school in five years. They don't need no 12 years. What, uh, what does a machinist mate do? Uh, well, the training was like uh, down in the uh, engine room on a ship. On, uh, 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 I think, an oil powered uh, uh, steam turbines on about all the ships. Mm -hmm. Some of them, smaller ships, might have some kind of big diesel motor. You know, it had to be real small. Did you go after your training as a machinist, mate? Did you end up on a ship? Yeah. Well, I got another school after machinist mate. School. What was that? Um, well, I think I was, I was out of, there's about 20, 25 boys, something like that, in machinist mate class I was in. And I think maybe I was maybe the tops in the, in the class on the score. I think I beat them two other boys. I mean, these two other boys put in for the top people, I guess we had to put in for it. They wouldn't just volunteer the air conditioning refrigeration school in um, San Diego, California. So we went from, I went to boot camp in the heat of the summer up there running from June to August in the hottest part of the summer out there holding a I think it was the M1s while we trained with the heavy guns in World War II, holding them things up over your head running or something, to uh, machinist made school, which went through the winter to about January, I think. And then I had a little bit of time to go to that uh, air conditioning and refrigeration school in San Diego, California. and. Uh, it was a, it, it was good duty. Some there's a bunch of chiefs and first class in that school, and we was just E uh, E two or E three at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it really uh, we stood out them chiefs and first class in there, and never had to stand any watch duties for. Uh, I think it last two or three months. There wasn't no watch duties at all. I don't know where they lost us on the roster or what. We just got to loaf after about six or eight hours of school through the week and just loaf around. And went from wintertime in Great Lakes to uh, on uh, across from Tijuana. Mm -hmm. Did you go the, down to Tijuana? The, the barracks didn't even, wasn't even enclosed. You'd look out the, the roof of the barracks and it was open like a shelter house. Oh, yeah. That's how warm it was down there in January. Did you go down to Tijuana any? I uh, went, went down there once or twice, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, it, you'd probably almost smell it before you'd see it. <laughs> okay. No. Well, hey, let me ask you this. What did your folks think about you going in the Navy? Uh, well, I had five older brothers. It was all in uh, different services. So we was all in the service. My dad was in, uh, I think I was the Army, not the Air Force. And he, I think he got out early, maybe a Diagnosed him with a spinal meningitis, the best I remember. And I think he, maybe he, uh, his m my mom or grandparents or something, he, I think he was the oldest boy in their family. And he, he kind of, um, my uncles are about all dead. 
on my granddad's part. I don't know if my cousins agree with me, but I think he kind of helped raise the other kids. And uh, he, he, actually, he always hung around my grandpa. He mm -hmm. said he drove a, had a school bus made out of a, a milk truck, and he sat on a milk crate to drive a school bus way back in up, out by them lakes of Michael Tree. That's mm -hmm. where they lived when I went in the service. Michael Tree Road, I don't know where they got that name at. <laughs> okay, now well, let me ask you this. Now, after you finished your air conditioning school in San Diego, where did you go then? Uh, did you go on a ship? Yeah, I think I had a little bit of leave. Uh, flew back, and I think I had to go up to Treasure Island uh, in the middle of uh, Oakland Bay at uh, Ghost, that bridge, big double-decker bridge sets on it, goes from San Francisco to Oakland. Right in the middle, we had a Navy base, Treasure Island. That was for, uh, either I went on, went there first, or went on leave and come back and reported there to the ship my ship, I was up on it, waiting for orders. Maybe that's the way it was. Uh, there, uh, that was maybe a few weeks. I don't remember exactly how many. Just stood some leaves, you know, this and that. And the aircraft her uh, Riscany, which I got orders on, which was uh, based out of naval on a big dock in Alameda, what they called it, California, up across from Oakland, back in there. Uh, it it come in from probably over off of Vietnam. So the name of the ship was Oriskany? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it was an aircraft carrier that you got assigned to? Yes. CVA, they called it, attack carrier. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I was, and when I went on it, somehow, uh, going through mach machinist mate school and and go through air conditioning refrigeration school, it, both of them kind of tied over. Somehow I wound up in an A-gang machinist, which uh, I got a job which was probably a lot better, good one of the better jobs for machinists then, we stood watch on an oxygen nitrogen production plant on that aircraft carrier. Mm -hmm. We had, uh, had one aft and forward and a bigger one in the middle. Mm -hmm. And um, they made, uh, made, uh, made oxygen and nitrogen for airplane tires and oxygen for mm -hmm. welding to make them self ship self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. Where did you go then? Did you, when you finally left uh, on the aircraft carrier, did you go back to Vietnam? Did the ship go back to Vietnam or what? Yeah, out of Alameda was the state base, dock, state dock. And I tell you the truth, I I can't remember how many cruises it made over at least three, maybe four. And I've I think it's about six months at a time. They go there in uh, uh, Philippines was the overseas base. There was a big naval base there and around, uh, they called it a Longapo, Philippines, about a uh, hundred miles from Manila. And then they go out off of, they call it Gulf of Tonkin, South China Sea and fly uh, fighters and bombers off uh, bombing uh, over in Vietnam. <laughs> Hit the Ho, Ho Chi Minh Trail and uh, that stuff. And What was that like being on an aircraft carrier over there at the time? Was it hard work? Well, we had, like I say, in that uh, we was in no danger. Uh, one of the better jobs for uh, a machinist mate, the engine room, I don't know if you ever been on a ship, down in the engine room, you can go past one of those main uh, uh, 
manholes that go stairs going down the engine room, and it's maybe three, four uh, floors down to the engine room on an aircraft carrier. You just go past that um, below the hangar deck. That's where we slept at, one deck below the hangar deck. We had a bunk room there. And you could just stay heat coming out of that from that engine room. So it was hot down there in that engine room. But the boiler, boilermen, they had it worse than the engine room. They was around uh, steam heat, uh, keeping the boiler going. They really had it hot. Uh, How many times were you over there uh, in, uh, off the Gulf of Tonkin? Did you do it more than once? Yeah, uh, three, four cruises that uh, I think uh, best I can remember about five, six months at a time. How long were you in the Navy? Uh, total active uh, in a total four years. When were you discharged from the active duty? Uh, well, I was close to four years. It, I think I went in June the 16th, 17th, and maybe got out June the 10th, 1974. 74? Uh-huh. Okay. When you got out, what did you do? Did you come home right away or what? Uh, yeah, I, I, I flew around. I got... Uh, this is a long story. I had to start having problems with my uh, heels and my feet. They diagnosed it as a rider syndrome arthritis. Dex, I'm still Dex is hard on your feet. Anyway, and I, uh, I went one time. I went to. I got off at a wrist or knee and went to a naval hospital in Oakland, California for a while. I remember that as the first thing about my feet. And they gave me some free leave, convalescent leave. And I had a brother, oldest brother, that lived uh, about 60 miles north of uh, San Francisco. At, uh, a place uh, called Santa Rosa, mm -hmm. and I, I'd go up and see him. I had a couple cars over the years when I was uh, out there, but his boys found from other boys, pretty good car. So I'd drive up there to could visit with him, so I had a pretty good one back in the States, and uh, other boys, you know, just run around, go back on the ship, tried to sightsee a little bit, and uh, being boys, we drank, drank a lot of beer, mostly. <laughs> it was carousing, uh, that's the way we was. Were uh, you married then? No. I didn't get married till uh, later in 1974. 74? Mm -hmm. After I got out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, that I had trouble with my feet, and then I, I'm trying to think exactly how it all worked. I went, and then I was, lost my connection to that ship, and then somehow I went back to Treasure Island one time, and I stood some watchers there, and I, I still remember this to this day. It was about, about that time Right, you had on the news about old Charles Manson thing went on, and Patty Hearst, and uh, Hell's Angels is a big deal around San Francisco. One time they had me on Treasure Island on the entrance, coming off that double decker bridge that went to Treasure Island, and it was, I think it was a man-made filled-in island mostly. It had a hill there, but they built up. It was not that. Maybe it's six feet, best I remember, above the bay, what, eight feet. They filled a lot of it in, during, maybe during World War II, I don't know. I was on that entrance, I had something about as big as an outhouse as a guard shack up there and a telephone, and I don't think he even had a, maybe a flashlight. Never had a club and all. 
up there all alone, a few miles away from anybody on the base, and you had trouble, all you'd do is maybe call somebody. And the way things are nowadays, uh, I still, uh, I didn't like that feeling at all. Anybody could come off that road, that bridge, and there was a lot going on in that area at that time. You know? Yeah, there was. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Uh, the Black Panthers and all that stuff was going on in the, out of Oakland. When you got married, uh, is your wife from here, Soda County, or where? Yes, uh, she uh, was born and raised. She might have moved one time within a half a mile of Friendship, Ohio. Mm -hmm. When she was a little girl, maybe lived a quarter mile away from across from Friendship, Ohio. Did you know her while you were going to school down there? Did you know her? No, I didn't know her till I got out. I I heard of her brothers and stuff. Mm -hmm. And when you when you got out, uh, did you find a job somewhere? Uh, yeah. How was it? I I. I went to like a GI Bill. I had a, my next older brother, at one I said had it bad. He was going to Shawnee Technical College. Is that Dan? Yeah. He was going there when I got out. And uh, so I done that in the fall of 1970. I started that. And I, I first took uh, natural resources. That's before it changed over to Shawnee College. It was out of Lucasville, where the vocational school was. I first took uh, Parks and Recreation, that's what it was. And that was, to me, that was kind of boring. So I switched to civil engineering, and that was, parts of that was a little too hard. And I never did, I closed just a few credits to get an associate degree. And uh, I never did get it, but I could get it. I done that for about a couple years, juggling classes and making money on the side, uh, like selling wood or something. And uh, I had different jobs. One one job, I got in a pipe fitter or apprentice program once, going to apprenticeship. I probably should have stuck with that, but they started laying me off, and I was an older guy. When I was about 29, and they all had the younger boys, and they all, mostly relation, got them in, and I was like an old, old man compared to them. And I was kind of burnt out on schooling, I think was part of it. I was working up the apprenticeship up to Aristec, Chemical, which uh, changed over to something else—I forget the name—up at Haverhill, and uh, how I got out of that. And then I, uh, this and that, and I got a job at uh, N and W Yards up here as a carbon in Portsmouth. And uh, well, I'd done that, and then I got in a pipe fitter program. I, I. I think I was seventh on a test for the pipe fitter program. And then I shouldn't have dropped out of it, but I did. I stopped going to her schooling. I was laid off anyway. I didn't like that when they singled me out, laying me off and the other, other ones was working. And uh, Are you retired now? You are, aren't you? Retired? Yes, I'm the last, I worked the N and W at Carmen for six or seven months, and they laid off in Portsmouth. And then last job of 1981, I started a CSX railroad as a carman up uh, uh, shops up above Greenup, Kentucky. They had some big uh, welding and cutting uh, locomotive car shops up there. Mm -hmm. yeah, but they kind of went out of now. They kind of privatized it. Did, when you got out of the Navy, did you end up in any veterans groups like American Legion or anything like that? I've been in it uh, 
two, maybe three times. I was in it last year, mm -hmm. and I haven't renewed. I, Do you, it's good for maybe I should. <laughs> I didn't didn't drinking. Uh, I was on it for something to socialize, but I, I don't know. Were you in the reserves? Did you get in the Navy reserves? Not active. So, um, do you have any souvenirs from your Navy time? Do you have your uniform? I should have it somewhere in uh, <laughs> dark wool and maybe a white too. I, I think I got it. It might not, I probably can't get it on. <laughs> yeah. I think. Uh, about that time, I weighed 175, 185 pounds, maybe, mm -hmm. at my heaviest, maybe less than that. Now, I, last I know, I weigh about 240. When you were in the Navy, did you ever meet any famous people? Uh, did you meet any admirals? Well, we had a Admiral Zumwalt in the Navy about that time, and he he's a lot more liberal. He he changed it. When, uh, he's uh, what would it be, Secretary of the Navy or something? He. He changed it where you didn't have to have constant trim haircuts. You could have longer haircuts and liberalized it a lot. Um, Did you ever see him? From a long ways off. <laughs> long ways off? Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe when he uh, graduated from machinist mate school or boot camp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other than that, no, I, I can't, can't say I've ever seen anybody famous. Um, is there anything else, Ron, you'd like to say about the Navy or anything else? Uh, well, I, I enjoyed it. I, if I had to do over again, I would have done more sightseeing when I had the chance. Like I was in Hawaii, uh, that was kind of a stopping over point, going overseas, Pearl Harbor, right across from that uh, what is that, Arizona? It's Arizona? Mm -hmm. You could about see it and where uh, we docked at. And should have went around the island more. Uh, got to travel. So I went to Hong Kong, Singapore, went across the equator, right? Old ceremony going to uh, Singapore. Uh, went to Japan, two or three. Uh, Places, Sasebo, Yokosuka, Yokohama, or something. That aircraft carrier somehow it had four big propellers on it. Oh, about as tall as that wind, about maybe more, maybe eight feet across. And uh, somehow it lost, broke a shaft. I think it broke the whole shaft off, which was close to being a big around as a 50 gallon barrel, the best I can remember. I don't know what, they might have scraped the bottom of the bay or hit the dock with it or something. I wouldn't think a whale would have broke that off going overseas. They lost one of them going overseas once and they had to go and dry dock in, over in uh, Japan and a uh, friendly U.S. Uh, base over in Japan, uh, Yokosuka, I think. And I stand up on top of the dock and look down at that aircraft carrier sitting on big blocks, you know. They had a blueprint, uh, know where to put them, dry dock, to fix that uh, shaft. And, and Japanese down in there uh, blowing whistles, seemed like a supervisor would constantly blowing a whistle, just giving directions. They, even, they was a lot more business-like. Uh -huh. I know the yard workers, out of San Francisco, I was saying, you go down the ship and they have the lights off and you love a trip over them down there, down there sleeping. <laughs> That's American yard birds, we call them. Mm -hmm. they, they had to get so much done, but there's a lot more, 
had to do a lot less probably. You had to do certification on air pipes and things like that ever, ever so often, like on that oxygen uh, plant. Mm -hmm. So I, in Japan, you had to replace the shaft, the propeller shafts. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's somewhere between, uh, we stopped in Guam one time to somewhere between uh, probably Hawaii and the Philippines, it's in the bottom of the ocean or somewhere. <laughs> okay. Might have hit a wheel, well, maybe that could have done it, I don't know. <laughs> but it, uh, well, is there anything else you'd like to say? Did you, you say you liked the Navy, didn't you? Yeah, maybe. I was a E3 when I got out, and best I remember, I think I passed the E, uh, uh, no, wait, wait a minute, is that right? Third class, which would be a E4. I was an E4 machinist mate, third class, machinist mate petty officer. Now, I passed the test for uh, E5, second class, but they, I had to extend, uh, I can't remember how much they said I, they always had a plan to try to get you to re-up unless they wanted to get rid of you for some reason, you know. I. Uh, Do you wish you'd stayed in? Uh, maybe, you never know what, how things will work out. Mm -hmm. you know, a, lot of, a lot of things in life are just luck. You know, you, you got no control, you didn't do the right thing, what you think is the right thing, and you know, things will work out at God's will or whatever. I, I operated, got to where I trained myself. There's two people run them oxygen plants. They just a mess of gauges. And that main one had two 3,000 pound, like a big diesel motor air compressors, and then they had a reef refrigeration unit. Cooled air down to, had to go down minus, it seemed like 270 some degrees to turn air into liquid oxygen. And, uh, and then they, they got nitrogen and argon and carbon dye dumped that. But it had to be pure before they'd keep it. It had to almost be 99 point something. And they'd get diesel smoke off that ship that would come in the air intake and it they'd have to test it before they'd say it was good. If it wasn't good, they just dumped the whole tank over the side. They had a 500 gallon tank in the middle and seemed like a 250 gallon tank on each end. And half the time, it didn't pass their specs for breathing in a jet. They'd put it in a thing and then it'd fill up like a little Freon bottle that they put in these had Corsairs and uh, Crusader jets, fighters and bombers. Mm -hmm. One time I landed on that thing in a mail plane, prop job, and a few days later I watched that thing. We had a closed circuit TV uh, and I landed there give away and that mail plane fell down. I think it was the same one. One of the props hit the deck and tore the whole prop off of it and everything else on landing. Had to catch that cable, you know, like a big horse's foot. And one time I flew off on a big helicopter in, uh, into the Philippines with a sample out of oxygen and looked down on that ship going through the water like on a postcard, you know. I, it's, a, it's an experience. Well, I want to thank you for coming in and telling us about that. Okay. I'd, okay. I'm trying to proud. I'd, that I learned how I was a op, the, uh, the boss on two people. We had one turning the valves and sat there watching that plant to get everything where it worked right and operated maximum. And I, I got to I just read the book and got to where I could operate it myself. I tried to get them to send me to a oxygen screw he had around Norfolk, Virginia, but I couldn't get him to do it. So mm -hmm. Maybe if I'd re-up, they might have done it. I could have held him hostage. I'll re-up if you send me that screw first or something. Probably could have got it. Okay. Yeah.
But it is an experience. I remember my brother, he was over in the med. He, he said over there when they went to Italy and uh, Greece and Spain, they'd be drinking, they'd, they'd go in and dance right around the whole family sitting at a kitchen table, you know, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> you didn't get that, did you? Well, down in South Carolina, I was down there once, and they didn't, I remember a bar, and you'd, the bar, the bathroom was in the living quarters. You'd go past the people sitting in their house watching TV and use the bathroom. Okay. You could drink a mixed drink down in South Carolina at that time while you was driving, going down the road, as long as you weren't drunk. Okay, well, thanks for coming in. We're going to let you go then, okay?